Welcome back, networking enthusiasts. In part two of our series on building a fully routed Kubernetes cluster with Calico CNI, we'll be directing external traffic to our workloads. Instead of using a dedicated load balancer, we'll leverage the routing capabilities of standard router hardware. That's possible thanks to Metal LB, software specifically designed for bare metal Kubernetes clusters. It utilizes standard routing protocols to effectively distribute incoming traffic across multiple nodes in the cluster. We'll also dive into traffic policies. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive in. If you are starting with this video, please watch part one first, as we'll be building on the configuration we set up there. Just to quickly recap where we left off. We have two Kubernetes nodes that host our workloads, Cube1 and Cube2. We've built a fully routed network. This means that the traffic between the pods is routed. There is no overlay network. Each node has a small block of addresses assigned from the pod subnet. In order for the pods to communicate, the nodes need to know about each other's pod subnet. To do that, there's a BGP session established between the nodes. Whenever a new address block is assigned, it's advertised into BGP so that other nodes know how to get to it. As pod IP addresses change all the time, there's also a service network where we define cluster IPs that provide a stable endpoint for the clients to access. To expose those services endpoints outside the cluster so that external users can get to our workloads, we did peer both of our Kubernetes nodes with a server running BGP software that we call the router. Using BGP, we did advertise the service network to the router, so it knows how to get to our services. To prevent the pod network from being advertised outside the cluster, we've applied a filter to the BGP peering session from the nodes to the router. Mind that the filter is not applied to the peering session between Kubernetes nodes. If we did apply the filter there, it would break the pod-to-pod -pod communication. Filter is only applied on the session to the router. Unfortunately, the approach that we've used to expose services in Kubernetes is not ideal. Right now, our services network is visible to the router, meaning it's exposed outside the cluster. This is problematic because services of type cluster IP are designed to provide stable endpoints for pods within the cluster. If we expose these cluster IP services externally, we are increasing the potential surface of attack. For instance, in web application, you wouldn't want to expose the data access layer outside the cluster. The data access layer should only be accessible from the business logic layer and so on. Imagine having a Kubernetes cluster with 100 services. Using our current method, we would be exposing all of these services rather than just a single ingress controller. We also lose control over what should remain hidden and what should be accessible from outside the cluster. Moreover, the service IP address range is large and private. We can't just expose it directly to the internet. We need to implement a firewall that performs network address translation to make the service available publicly. In summary, our current approach isn't secure or efficient. We need a better solution to manage our network exposure in Kubernetes. Okay, let's fix all those issues right now. I will open the Calico BGP configuration and remove the service cluster IP section, then apply the change with kubectl apply. Okay, now neither the pod network nor the service network is accessible from the outside. Fantastic. But wait, how should our users access our application running on the cluster? To expose services outside of the cluster, we'll use load balancer service type. It's a consistent interface for creating and managing load balancers across different cloud platforms. However, the actual load balancing is handled by the underlying cloud infrastructure. In our self-hosted solution, load balancer service type will be handled by MetalLB. That's a load balancer implementation specifically designed for Kubernetes cluster running on bare metal infrastructure. Let's proceed to the installation of MetalLB. First step is to download the manifest file. MetalLB consists of two key components, the controller responsible for assigning the IP addresses and the speaker responsible for announcing those IP addresses either through layer two or BGP. We won't be using the speaker to advertise the addresses into BGP 
we'll be using only the controller to assign the IP addresses and we'll task Calico to advertise those IP addresses into BGP. Let's open the Metal LB manifest and remove the speaker daemon set as we won't be using it. Now let's apply the manifest file. Here's our controller pod. Next step is to configure Calico to advertise service load balancer IP address range. That's the range of IP addresses that service of type load balancer will get their IP addresses from. Let's open Calico's BGP configuration manifest and add the service load balancer address range. Mind that Calico is responsible only for advertising the IP addresses into BGP and it depends on external controllers for IP allocation. That's where Metal LB comes into play. Let's save and then apply the configuration. If we look at the external router, we'll see the load balancer range has been advertised. Perfect. Next thing to do is to configure the IP address pool for Metal LB to use. I will create a new manifest file. The kind of resource will be IP address pool. Let's set the name to LB pool. Then let's put it in the Metal LB system namespace. Finally, let's set the IP address range from which addresses will be allocated. This needs to match the IP address pool we did put in the Calico configuration. Okay, now let's save and apply the configuration. Our solution is ready. Calico is advertising our load balancer service address range into BGP and Metal LB controller should assign IP addresses for newly created services of load balancer type. Let's test that. We have a deployment with two WhoMI pods. Each pod is running on different server. Let's go to services. There's WhoMI service of cluster IP type in front of the pods. Let me edit the service and change its type to load balancer. Do you see that? External IP address has been assigned to the service. If you look at the event section of description of the service, we see that a new IP address has been assigned by the Metal LB controller. In logs of the Metal LB controller, we'll also find information that the IP address has been allocated. Let's check if the solution works. I will go to the router and try calling the service via the newly assigned IP. We did connect to a pod that's on the cube one node, but via cube two address. One more try. This time we did connect to a pod that's on cube 2, but via cube 1 address. And again, same thing, again. Now we connected to a pod that's on cube 1 via cube 1 address. Just to understand how it works, the router has multiple paths available to the load balancer network. The data can be sent either to cube 1 or cube 2. Once the traffic reaches the node, it then goes to one of the pods via the cluster IP service. The cluster IP service performs network address translation and can either direct the traffic to the pod on the same node or to the pod on the other node, just to visualize all the use cases. Traffic can go to cube 1 and then to pod on cube 1. Uh, traffic can go to cube 1 and then from cube 1 to a pod located on cube 2. Third case is the traffic goes to cube 2 and then to pod on cube 2. And last case is traffic goes to cube 2 and then to pod on cube 1. So basically, the first load balancing happens as the routers distribute traffic among equal cost network paths and the second load balancing happens on the node itself as the traffic reaches the cluster IP service. The benefit of such an approach is that the traffic is distributed equally among all pods running a service. However, there are also some downsides. One, the traffic is distributed to all nodes of the cluster, no matter if a node is running pods or not. That may entail additional network load due to added network hops. Second, more serious downside is that the cube proxy performs a SNAT. To be precise, the address translation is usually done by IP tables and cube proxy just creates those IP table rules. But anyway, what happens is the client source IP is replaced with the IP of the node. Basically, the pod will always see the traffic is coming from the node. It will not see the original source IP that request came from. Do you see that? The source address that the pod is seeing is cube2 address not the router's address that initiated the connection. Just so you get a good understanding of what's going on. Let me create a new setup. We'll set up an identical WhoMI deployment, but this time the number of pods is set to one and the pod is bound to run only on the cube one node. The service type is load balancer. Let's apply the manifest file and check the setup. 
Here's our deployment. It has only a single pod. The pod is running on Cube One node. There's also a load balancer type service with 91.1 IP. Let me go to the router and try accessing that service. Do you see that? The request was sent via Cube2 node and we still got a reply despite Cube2 is not hosting any application pods. That's because the Cube2 node is directing the traffic to Cube1. Next request went via Cube1 node. Here's a visualization. Pod is only available on Cube1, however cluster IP service is available in both Cube1 and Cube2 nodes. Some requests go via this path, that's Cube1 and pod on Cube1, and some requests go via this path, that's Cube2, and the traffic is directed to pod on Cube1. Here we come to an important concept called Kubernetes External Traffic Policy. It controls how external traffic is routed to the cluster. In the scenario that we've just discussed, the external traffic policy is set to cluster. And that's the default. In this mode, the traffic is load balanced across all cluster nodes. There is yet another external traffic policy called local. Let's explore how it works. When the external traffic policy is set to local, traffic is only directed to nodes hosting specific pods. Let me demo that. Here's our deployment that has two pods, one pod on each node. Let's see what happens once we go to the load balancer service for our deployment and change the external traffic policy to local. In this mode, only the IP addresses of the nodes that host the pods are advertised into BGP. To access the service, we'll no longer use the slash 24 subnet. Instead, nodes with running pods advertise a specific slash 32 address. Nodes without pods won't advertise the load balancer IP, preventing traffic from being directed there. You may wonder why traffic uses the slash 32 route over the slash 24 route. It's because slash 32 is more specific and more specific routes always takes precedence. Let's test this by calling the service a few times from the router. Notice how the traffic is still load balanced across both pods. However, this time the source IP is preserved. How does it work? Once traffic reaches the node, it's directed to the pods running on that node, avoiding any need to forward to other nodes. Since the traffic stays within the node, there's no need for source network address translation preserving the source IP. Let's visualize this process. When external traffic policy is set to local, the traffic will be load balanced among every node that hosts pods. Once the traffic reaches the node, it only goes to pods on that node. It's not directed to other nodes. Let's see the potential paths. The traffic can go from router to cube one and then to the pod on cube one, or the traffic can go from the router to cube two and then to the pod on cube two. There is no horizontal traffic between cube one and cube two. Just to understand it better, if we would have more nodes, let's say cube 3 and cube 4, and cube 3 would have no pods for our application and cube 2 had two pods, then the traffic would go only to cube 1, cube 2 and cube 4. Uh, cube 3 would not advertise the load balancer address into BGP, so the traffic will not go there. Look at the routing table. There's no cube 3 address there. Moreover, if a certain node like cube 4 has more than one pod, the traffic will be balanced across the pods, but only within that node. Okay, let's go to the other deployment that has only a single pod running on cube 1 node. I will go to services and change the external traffic policy for that service to local. Now only cube1 should advertise the load balancer IP address and traffic should be directed only to cube1 as it's hosting the pod. Let's check the router for that new service. Why are there two routes pointing to 91.1 load balancer IP? There should be only a single route to cube1 ending with .58 address. Let's investigate. Here's the list of routes that we receive from cube1. Okay, 91.1 is on the list. That's to be expected. Here's the list of routes we received from cube2. Why is cube2 advertising 91.1 IP? Let's investigate further. I will go to Calico node running on cube2, open daemon sets, Calico node, and then enter pods shell. Let's see what's going on on cube2 from the BGP perspective. We have two BGP sessions established, one with cube1 and another with the router. Let's see what we advertise to the router. Indeed, we do advertise 91.1 address, but this address does not belong to cube2 node. 
It's learned via BGP from Cube One. The simplest thing to fix the issue is to filter out the load balancer network so it's not distributed between Kubernetes nodes, but only distributed to the external router. To do that, let's open the BGP configuration file and disable node to node mesh that's enabled by default. Let's apply the configuration. That will obviously break the BGP session between Cube 1 and Cube 2. If we look at the router, we'll see 91.0 service available via both Cube 1 and Cube 2, as both Cube 1 and Cube 2 have application pods. However, 91.1 service is available only via Cube 1. That's how we want it. Unfortunately, after disabling the node to node mesh, there's no BGP session between Kubernetes nodes, so routing information between the nodes is no longer exchanged. Cube 1 does not know about Cube 2 pod subnet. Let's restore the connection, but this time we'll filter out the load balancer network from being advertised between the nodes. First, we need to create a BGP filter that rejects the load balancer network. I have a configuration file ready. Let's apply the manifest file. Now it's time to establish BGP peering between Cube 1 and Cube 2. I also have a configuration file ready. Here we specify that this configuration should be applied only to the cube 1 node. We configure the endpoint to be cube 2 and apply the newly created filter. Let's apply the manifest file. Next, let's define the peering between cube 2 and cube 1. This configuration is identical, but it only applies to cube 2 and the peering IP points to cube 1. Let's apply the configuration. Finally, let's check the BGP status. All looks good. We have BGP session between cube 1 and the router, as well as session between cube 1 and cube 2. We should be back on track. First thing first, let's check the routing table on the router. Looks good, the service is only advertised from cube 1. Now let's call the single pod service. We connect to the same pod. Our source IP is visible. That's great. Let me show you one more thing. Here's the Who Am I service with two pods. As expected, both cube 1 and cube 2 are advertising load balancer addresses into BGP. Let me scale down the application. I will go to deployments and change the replica count to 1. Now there's only a single pod on cube 1. If we go back to router and list the routes, we no longer see the path to cube 2 available. That's to be expected. That node is no longer hosting application pods. Just to sum up what we did, we've disabled mesh connection between Kubernetes nodes and then established a new BGP peering session between the nodes, but we filter out the load balancer network. That's it. Every time we create a new service of load balancer type with external traffic policy set to local, the nodes that run application pods advertise their IPs into BGP. Nodes that do not have the application do not advertise their IPs. Local policy type is very useful, especially when you want to preserve the original source IP address of incoming traffic. External traffic policy set to local also reduce the internode network traffic and improve performance by keeping the traffic local to the node. The downside of this approach is potentially uneven load balancing. Few things to mention. Load balancing methods that we've discussed in this video require the router to support BGP with multipath, ECMP. Moreover, it's dependent on the packet hashing algorithm. On the plus side, you don't need a dedicated load balancer, but can use standard router hardware. Most routers support those features. However, the downside of such approach compared to a real load balancer is handling a node's failure. If a node goes down, all existing connections will be rehashed, resulting in all connections breaking. Of course, it will recover, but that's something you need to keep in mind. Next time, we'll see Calico's eBPF data plane in action, so stay tuned. If you found this video informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more interesting Kubernetes content. Stay safe and until next time.